Good morning, everybody. Here we have a Cummins ISX 2250 with a complaint of compression in the cooling system. And we have a number five head gasket failure, which actually means the liner dropped. You can see here compared to the rest of them, causing compression in the cooling system due to the liner being dropped, which we've measured. Here we have the engine serial number, ISX 2250, CM 2250. So here we've already, already cut four liners. As you can see here, we want it to be between 10 and four, seven and 14 thousandths high. I like to set them at 14 exactly to keep that liner higher and like we talked about before, number five was the actual failure. So we're gonna remove this tool and we're gonna remove the liner. Right now I have the new liner with a 20 thousandths shim in it, which is too high. I'm gonna take it off. Remember, like I said, this is a liner with the 20,000 shim installed. So it's gonna be too high. So we're gonna take the measurement right now. I like measuring on the intake side because it's the higher side. So you can get an accurate reading. I understand there's a torque spec, but in reality, all you're doing, doing is compressing the sh sleeve down. For video purposes, we're just gonna keep moving. To simulate the load of the head. Zero out your, zero it out. Lock it. We have 29 thousandths here. We have 26 thousandths on the exhaust side. Like I said, you make your measurement on the intake side and you subtract to get 14 thousandths. So we have 29 thousandths, which means we have to cut to get to 14 thousandths. Uh, that would be 15 thousandths. We'll have to cut 15 thousandths with the tool that we have. Okay, now we can remove the tool.
Here's a shim that Cummins provides us. There's only two shims they provide you with, a 20 and a 32 thousandths. So here we have the catcher for the uh, chips. This is critical to um, catch all the chips. It comes with the tool. We recommend it to uh, prevent any metal chips uh, entering the crankshaft and any lubricating and moving components. And it goes inside like so. And here we have the actual cutter. Here is the actual cutting blade. And here's the first step to cutting, laying and centering the tool. Here we have four bolts that come with the tool. You want to lubricate those as well. The base right now, as you can see, this bottom cutting centers itself. So it's just sitting inside and centering itself. See, once you know that the cutting bit is centered, that's when you're, you can tighten down these bolts in a crisscross pattern. You tighten these down crisscross pattern. Coming specification is 50 foot pounds. You can use your own judgment. I've been doing this long enough where I can feel what 50 foot pounds is. I know many may say it's not right, but 50 foot pounds is what Cummins recommends. Step one is to you want to raise the cutter up five thousandths. That's our first step. The way you raise it is by turning the lower unit counterclockwise. Clockwise, I'm sorry. We're going to raise it five thousandths. Every notch is one thousandths of an inch. One, two, three, four, five. I just raised the cutter tip five thousandths. You should feel no drag at this point. Next step, you install the C-clip by raising the complete unit up. And oiling is also important. You oil the unit to the back using 30 weight oil. Next step is we're going to extend the blade between the counterboard ledge and the blade. And this tool is provided through the Cummins package, a 32 thousandths shim. This is to ensure that you don't cut the secondary lip that the counterboard has.
Here we have the shim. We want to extend a bit till it meets the shim. Tighten down the blade equally. Remove the shim. Now we want to lower the cutting bit all the way down. And raise it five thousandths. Three, four, five. Now, now we can extend the bit fully to meet the second lip of the counterboard ledge. Now we're going to drop the counter bit one thousandths at a time until you start seeing metal chips and you can start counting your cuts. These are our old marks. We're going to make our new marks. You want to make sure this top ring does not move. So now we're dropping the counter bit one thousandths at a time. That's still not a cut. Like I said before, we're cutting 15 thousandths. I've already cut one thousandths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're going to stop here. You cut one thousandths at a time. Equal force. Clockwise. So every cut, you're going to feel some restriction. And then it breaks free after you went 360. It's no longer cutting at this point. You can move on to the next cut.
you need to ensure this C-clip does not fall out on you. So here we are at our 15 thousandths, last cut. So here we want to pick up the blade. Pick it back up and extend it. Here we want to retract the blade before removal. So here we have the blade. It's easier to see here when you extend and return the blade. This is what I was talking about. You want to make sure you put that shim in there so you don't overextend or underextend. You want to make sure that the shim meets with that to ensure you make a good cut. And here, here, you secure it down, lock it down with these two screws that clamp this. So this is the result. And that is the second lip I told you to avoid not to cut. That is the purpose of that shim. And here we have a fresh cut block. This is the shim that you use it's the thickness of the wall to make sure the blade goes under that wall now we can vacuum all the metal chips that have been removed 